Hey, good morning, guys. This is Troy D from the Troy D 24-7 Mall channel. On Point Reviews all day, every day. We've got a morning thoughts video yet again. As you can see, it's a beautiful morning here, sunrise. And I'm wearing a hoodie. This is great. This is good news because it's getting a little bit colder. The colder Los Angeles weather in the mornings is coming back. I mean, it's the main reason people really move here. And today, we're going to try one of these perfumes. Byron Mula Mula Rouge Extreme. This is absolutely new. And let's see, there was a lot of hype about it. This is the first Byron I've ever owned. And I know uh, some of y'all have the other one. So let's try it right now. Scent of the day, Rouge Extreme. Hmm, it's nice. Sweet, very sweet, very sweet. Berries, caramel. Yeah, it's nice. Very nice. Byron Mula Mula Rouge Extreme. Now, here's the big question that I know uh, majority, a lot of people that are watching this channel or just in the fragrance community in general, a lot of people ask is, how can you afford all this stuff? How could you buy all these perfumes with these ridiculous uh, retail prices? And how could you own them at such a fast rate? So those are one of those things that gets asked. I'm here to give you guys the solution to that. Let's hit the music. Okay, welcome back guys. So again, I'm here to give you guys tips on how you can afford niche fragrances or any fragrances for that matter, how you can buy them or how you can keep them and not really hurt your wallet. Now, the big fallacy is that you need a lot of money to do this, okay? And to be honest, for me, when I see other people buy uh, a lot of designers all at one time, or I see a lot of people buy uh, even clones and I see, I mean, I see them post the receipts, you know, $3,000, $4,000 in clones, uh you know it really like shatters you know my entire belief system of how you know it's a money thing or it's like uh well i can't afford it because of the money because really a lot of people especially frag heads or frag addicts uh in this uh community don't even realize it but they actually do spend more than what a lot of people think or what they think probably they try to ignore it but that's not about it this is about how you can basically get those fragrances without really spending a lot of money so the first step for me is to realize your usage that's right your usage once you figure out how much you actually use then you can figure out your plan of how you can acquire a lot of different fragrances for the low. So for me, for example, one of the biggest ways I can tell about my usage is to look at my Blue de Chanel. My Blue de Chanel has been around for almost 10 years. This is from the OG batch from like way back. I mean, I lost the cap and everything, but look at this, there's the, okay. So if you look at this, if you look at the level, it took about 10 years to get to this level of 100 mil. And this was from a very, very active lifestyle. And I'm talking about clubbing, going out a lot, meeting a lot of people, more than probably 100 times more than what I'm doing today, which is, you know, I'm a dad and we do have friends, but it wasn't as crazy as I would say 10 years ago when, you know, well, we were partying every night and such. So 10 years, guys, 10 years of this, and I still have some. And that's a good way for me to assess like, okay, well, if it took that long, then I really technically don't need a 100 milliliter bottle. Once you figure that out, you can go to my other video where I talk about the decants and I talk about 5 mil, 10 mil, 2 mil. I have a video on that, a link at the end of the video where you can like really choose what kind of size you know, you're willing to use. And the second thing is that don't listen to these snobs that are all talking about like you have to own the bottle or you're some broke guy. <laughs> you're, some, you're some low life that can't afford this stuff. Do not listen to those guys. Those guys are idiots. Matter of fact, 
a lot of those people are just really protecting their ego or they're trying to protect their decision making which is sometimes skewed on really spending too much on a lot of bottles you know they'll make other people feel uneasy or insecure about themselves by saying hey you know what you don't have the big bottle they'll, they'll, they'll make you feel that way but you know you know to be honest it's actually their own insecurity that you know they're actually spending that much on a bottle that won't really run out also like usage wise when I look at usage, the most I've seen is from people that actually use it for work and for people that have really considered uh, a solid rotation or something that uh, they use a lot uh, because it really is something that uh, they think, you know, represents them very well. And so for those people, yeah, sure, own a big bottle. That's totally fine. And uh, yeah, that's totally cool. Now, the other way I do it is I swap for partials okay so that's one of those things that i do uh that really saves me money i mean it means i don't have to plunk like a couple hundred dollars every single time i see something i like i do offer to swap or to interchange this for this and you know we kind of like trade and that's one of those ways that's very 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 cost effective i mean really it is and that way you know i can definitely you know, get what I want and the other person gets what he wants. So the key here for swapping though, is you have to own things that I would say has value. And by that, I don't mean expensive. By that, I mean something that people really do remember, something that people consider is uh, an entry level or a must have. I just made a video on Roja Oceania and I was saying that you know it wasn't so groundbreaking to me but would I have owned it if it was offered as a trade and my answer would be yes because this Oceania is like always sold out and like a lot of people really want it so it's a good like like a blue chip or like a value chip and I'm not even talking about decanting because decanting is really cool too that's one of those things that I've realized um I mean, I used to collect like a lot of like sneakers and those things like, dude, they fill up the back the back wall and uh, it got to a point where I had to actually uh, get myself my own like storage, um, like a, a, a piece of a storage facility so I can put all my sneakers up there. The beautiful thing about perfumes is that it's only, it's liquid, right? It's, it's, it's liquid right here. And because it's liquid, it actually saves a lot of space. I mean, it's just a very, very small bottle. And then from there, like, you know, you have a 50 ml or 100 ml, like you can just decant, you know, some of these and you can either sell them for money or you can trade them, you know, with a bunch of people. And that way you get to avoid the whole like, oh, I need to pay $200 for basically a dopamine hit or uh, a huge pleasure hit of trying a new perfume or something that's really hyped. Like you don't need to do that. So yeah, I mean, I've I've definitely, you know, offered decants of these and in trade, I got other things that I wanted. And so that's another cost-effective way. You don't spend anything, well, maybe shipping, but that's the most that you're going to spend. And for the last one of those things, that's my tips for you to save absolute money on niche fragrances is don't look for it when the hype is really high, okay? So for example, this new Dixit and Zach that came out, it's like, it's kind of my bad that I'm looking for it right now. I'm looking for samples because, I mean, it was kind of like, uh, it was presented as a blind buy. There's no samples. These guys, Dixit and Zat, actually emailed them and they didn't respond about any samples. So I was like, holy crap, like everything, the three perfumes are like $500 and they're going to be uh, totally blind and I didn't want to spend $500 on something totally blind and so right now there's people that actually I approached and I was like you know can I get a sample and they're like no no I would never this is the most valuable thing right now no, no. and uh, actually you know this is me breaking my own rule I actually do not ask for things whenever it's like the hype is really high because a lot of these guys just have like right now that dopamine hit or maybe that pride of owning something that it's like new and nobody has it. So one of my tips for you guys is to not hit up people like that and just hit them up like later down the road 
when the dopamine hit has slowed down a bit, they've mellowed down a bit, they've checked it out, they've smelled it, it's not the greatest thing in the world, and then you can go try it. That way it's much easier. Uh, people don't have that kind of resistance on, you know, oh, you know, I, I just want to be one of the few people that own it. You know, <laughs> it's just funny, it's perfume. Just hit them when it's not so hype, that way, you know, they'll be okay with swapping or trading and stuff like that. And uh, you can go try these amazing, or well, hopefully amazing niche perfumes. One of the things, if you really do care about uh, presentation is to buy partials, you know, buy partials from people that have actually used the perfumes. One of those things I do is I keep tabs on owners. I keep tabs on owners that have these perfumes because a lot of the perfumes I like, and I'm talking about full bottles, uh, not a lot of people have them, and I do keep them for uh, not only the scent itself, but also for display uh, in my room and also for, you know, trade value. And I keep tabs on people that own perfumes that I actually like. Eventually, at some point, I'll hit them up and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll ask if they, you know, they've used enough, like a partial, and if they want to sell it. And just remember, guys, in this economic climate, I mean, people will really need money, okay? And that includes me, okay? So, you know, at this economic climate, people really would need money, and it doesn't hurt to ask them if things are for sale, you know, if they're selling anything, um, because I'm sure they will definitely entertain you. One of the kind of side effects of the pandemic is that, you know, there's really a lot of people that, you know, I mean, financially are impacted or economically are impacted, so, I mean, there's a really better chance that they will let go of some of their perfumes, whether it's full bottle or partial to you guys. So, you know, just be respectful and hit them up and hopefully you'll get what you need. Okay, that's it. Those are some of my very, very simple tips on how you can actually save or afford or attempt to get a lot of these niche perfumes. Like I said, I mean, let's take the snobbery out of this stuff. I mean, these perfumes can make you snobby because of, yeah, the culture, the uh, ingredients, the name, you know, the bottle and all of that. But, you know, it shouldn't be able to hurt your wallet that much. And actually, I'm really always trying to dispel the fact that, you know, you don't have to be stuck it at a certain level of perfumes just because technically you can't afford it. In your head, you can't afford it, okay? There's other means to do it and hopefully i've shared enough on this channel for you guys okay please like and subscribe okay hit the bell thank you and i'll see you guys tomorrow